Welcome to MAT 2LB, booklet number 9, fractions part 2, lesson number 5, dividing fractions, one fraction and one whole number. So we've got one division lesson under our belt. We are going to, when dividing fractions, keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and invert the second fraction. But what if we're not given two fractions right out of the gate? Just like when we were working with multiplication, we want two fractions. We want to have two fractions, one denominator in each, one numerator in each. So that's our goal is to get it that way. So when we have one fraction being divided by one whole number, the first thing that we want to do is change our whole number into a fraction by giving it a denominator of one. That's really all we're adding in this lesson. So let's try example number one, see what it looks like. Six tenths divided by three. So first thing we want to do is we want to turn that three into a fraction by putting it over one. Let's rewrite that. So we have six over 10 divided by three over one equals. So now this is like a regular division question. If you recall from the last lesson, when we are dividing two fractions, we are going to keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and invert the second fraction. So let's do that right now. In a rewrite, we have 6 over 10 multiplied by 1 over 3 equals. From here, regular multiplication rules apply. So numerator times numerator, that's going to give us 6 times 1, or 6, and denominator times denominator. 10 times 3 will give us 30. Now from here, we're going to write out our answer so far. That's 6 over 30. And we are going to go to the factor chart to see what factors are common to both 6 and 30. So there's 6. There's 30. We have 1 in common, 2 in common, 3 in common, and 6 in common. So 6 will be the greatest factor common to both. We divide both numerator and denominator by 6. And that's going to give us 6 divided by 6, 1, and 30 divided by 6 gives us 5. So our answer for this question is 1 fifth. So quick recap, what we've done is when we get a whole number and we're dividing by a whole number, first thing we're going to do is write that as a fraction with a denominator of 1. That's our goal. From there, it's just like regular division keep the first fraction, change the second, or change division to multiplication, invert the second fraction. So let's have a look at example number two. We'll try that procedure again. Four divided by two fifths. So there it is, it's division, but there's a whole number in there. First thing we wanna do, write that whole number as a fraction over one. Just to keep it tidy, let's rewrite that. Four over one divided by two over five equals. Now this is looking like a regular division question. We are going to keep the first fraction. We are going to change division to multiplication, and we are going to invert the second fraction. So that, on a rewrite, is going to look like 4 over 1 times 5 over 2 equals. And now we multiply, as we've done in the past, numerator times numerator. That's going to give us 20. And denominator times denominator. That is going to give us 2. And from here, we're going to rewrite our answer. This is our answer so far. We're going to go to the factor chart and see if there are factors that are common to both 20 and 2. So let's do that now. Whoops. Let's jump over here. There we have it. So we have 2 and 20. We have 1 in common, 2 in common, and that's it. So we are going to divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and that is going to give us 10 over 1, or just 10 is fine, as we discussed. Anytime you have a number over 1, we can just write it as just the numerator. So 10 over 1 or 10, that's fine. And that is the answer to example number 2. So what I'd like you to do now is hit pause in this video and try example A on your own, 4 sevenths divided by 2. Remember, the first thing you want to tackle is getting rid of whole numbers by turning them into fractions and then divide fractions as you had in the last lesson and this lesson too so far. So hit pause here, and when you're done, come on back, we'll see how you did. Okay, let's jump in and have a look. Here we have four over seven divided by two, and we're gonna make that two over one. It's looking good so far. Let's rewrite this. We have four over seven divided by two 
over 1, we are going to keep the first fraction. We are going to change from division to multiplication, and we are going to invert the second fraction. Let's do that now on the rewrite. We have, whoops, running out of space here, 4 over 7 times 1 over 2. Let's scooch everybody up here a little bit so we can get a little more space. There they are. And now let's actually perform that multiplication. Numerator times numerator. 4 times 1 will give us 4. And denominator times denominator is 7 times 2, which will give us 14. And now, sort of ran out of space here, so I'm just going to rewrite that. Just up over here, we have 4 over 14. And we are going to go to our factor chart to see if this can be reduced. And when we do that, we'll see that the greatest factor common to both 4 and 14 is 2. So we are going to do that arithmetic. 4 divided by 2 gives us 2, and 14 divided by 2 gives us 7. So 2 sevenths will be our answer to 4 sevenths divided by 2, which makes sense. What I'd like you to do now is, again, hit pause in the video and give example B a try on your own. And when you've got an answer, come on back. We'll see how you did. Okay, you're back. Let's get a look at this one. First things first, we have some division here, but we also have a whole number in the mix. So we are going to rewrite this as 5 over 1. I'm going to rewrite that now. 5 over 1 divided by 10 over 11 equals. We're going to KCI this bad boy. Keep the first fraction. Change division to multiplication and invert the second fraction. So let's do that now. 5 over 1 times 11 over 10 equals. This is multiplication of fractions. We multiply numerator times numerator, and that's going to give us 55. And we multiply denominator by denominator, 1 times 10. That is going to give us 10. And now we are going to rewrite that answer, 55 over 10. And we are going to look for a factor that is common to both 55 and 10. And when we do, we're going to find that 5 is common to both. So we are going to divide the numerator by 5, and that is going to give us 11. And we're going to multiply, or rather divide the denominator by 5, and that will give us 2. So our answer is 11 over 2. 5 divided by 10 elevenths gives us 11 over 2. So that's the end of lesson number five. If you're feeling good about this material, jump right into the worksheet, and I will see you in lesson number six, the last lesson in booklet number nine.